Hi, I'm Timothy Spann. I'm a developer advocate at Stream Native. My talk today is Hello Hydrate from Stream to Lake. I'm a DZone leader, big data MVP, data DJ. Love to do uh, different things with uh, streaming, with uh, real time data, IoT, AI, deep learning. Things like Apache Pulsar, Apache Flink, Apache NiFi, Apache Spark, things out in the open source. I've got a blog at Data in Motion. I've got uh, all the relevant information and all the talks I've done before at my speaker profile. So you want to look at some old talks, they're there. And I'll post these slides there as well. And uh, all my information is linked here if you need to contact me or want to talk about uh, some of the things I talk about today especially things related to what I call the flip stack. Like I mentioned, I work at Stream Native. This is the uh, company behind Apache Pulsar and Apache Bookkeeper, which is a cloud native event streaming platform. Let you do real time event streams, whether it's in Azure, Amazon, Google Cloud, uh, on premise or in any kind of uh, Kubernetes environment. Don't be afraid because everything here is open source. Just like my 12 foot skeleton, you know, it's, it's not going to hurt you. It's just here for uh, a good way to develop. And Apache Pulsar is what I'm going to talk about first. It is kind of unique out there. It's open source. It's designed from the beginning to be cloud native. It's a distributed messaging and streaming platform. And that's a key point of this. Now, why should I care about Pulsar? Multi tenancy is built in, so I can build one cluster. Use it by multiple companies, multiple organizations, multiple business units, multiple teams. Set things up so I can make tenants, namespaces, topics, all of those pretty easily without, uh, you know, without having to put in custom stuff or use things outside of the open source or come up with weird naming uh, setup. It's just designed for you to have many tenants and keep them secure. Scalability was there from the beginning when it was designed by Yahoo to scale out to internet scale. Whether you have thousands of messages or billions, it can scale out any way you need it to. What's nice here and what is very cloud friendly is geo replications built into the open source. So you could put your data and distribute it wherever it needs to be, whether it's in different availability zones, different clouds, different clusters all around the world. Great way to make sure you're messages or wherever you need them to be without having to do any extra development, extra coding, or getting some paid add-on. This is a unified messaging model, and I'll show you what that means in the next slides. Data durability, your data is protected and guaranteed, and that is configurable as durable as you want it to be. If you want it to be non-persistent, you could do that for certain use cases. But data durability is one of the key aspects of Apache Pulsar. Now Apache Pulsar has been around for a number of years and can be interacted with a large number of ways. Let's start from messaging. So I can have clients in pretty much all the major languages that you have out there, whether it's uh, Go, Java, C++, Python, Node.js, C Sharp, uh, Scala, Haskell, uh, WebSockets, there's a ton of them out there, and there's a bunch of them out in the open source. Very easy to pick a language and go. Built into it is Pulsar IO, so I could do sources and syncs automatically, don't have to write any code. Set up a little bit of configuration, and my messages can start streaming in or streaming out. Built in ability to do change data capture to a bunch of different uh, data stores. This is powered usually by Debezium. Uh, processing, we can process the data lots of different ways. Now it's in this topic that can be geo-replicated around the globe. We can do interactive queries with Presto or Trino, as well as with Hive. Stream and batch processing is enabled through very good uh, connectors for Flink, Flink SQL and Spark. And we can do other processing internally on events as they arrive in topics using uh, Pulsar functions. This allows for multi-languages to write, you know, what's similar to a database trigger when events arrive, you know, maybe run machine learning, run uh, cleanup, 
uh, whatever you want to do and maybe push it to another topic very easy by default your uh, all your messages and your topics are stored in a very fast low latency store within Apache uh, bookkeeper but you can set up without any add-ons without any heavy lifting the design so that it'll automatically stream uh, events to cloud native storage whether it's HDFS Google Amazon Azure wherever it has to be and still be available to be read by any of those clients or activate accessed by Presto in a SQL query or Spark or Flink it just acts as a regular message you don't have to know that it's in a cloud native storage it just lets you have basically infinite storage for your messages and infinite retention depending on your needs how long you want it to live it makes for a lot of different applications you could do very easily because of those uh, storage capabilities now I mentioned before unified messaging this is a, a true unified messaging platform from the initial design at Yahoo it needs to support message queuing these are things that ActiveMQ, Rabbit, Rocket, SQS, MQ Series, ton of different messaging queues do it. Pulsar lets you do that, where you can have, you know, many clients read the same data, and each one gets their own records. You could scale out consumption of data, and you could do it with lots of different uh, subscription types. Makes for a lot of different uh, applications people tend to have. Uh, in the enterprise or dealing with transactions are very fast we support that we also support what's common in the cloud is uh, data streaming things like Kafka and Kinesis where you're thinking about exactly one semantics often you want your data in order you have one consumer one consumer group Pulsar supports that as well makes it very nice and you don't have to make big decisions beforehand when you're doing this topic support this uh, out of the box it's just how you subscribe to them how you get that data out and maybe if you decide if you want things like partitions or not uh, a couple key milestones like I mentioned it came out of Yahoo as their cloud messaging service almost 10 years ago it got put into the open source accepted by Apache has been a top level project for a number of years and in the last couple of years stream native came around and has been rapidly accelerating what it can do uh, the help of some uh, key partners out there in the cloud that helped uh, add additional protocols like Kafka on Pulsar AMQP on Pulsar uh, MQTT on Pulsar have really uh, sped up uh, things you could do with it performance has gotten better the connections to uh, Flink have gotten better and if you look at some of the names down there there's some big people with uh, very large use cases using it we've got exactly one semantics in there a lot of uh, committers and a lot of active monthly committers things like transactions we're in 281 now going to iterate up pretty shortly it is a very active uh, community an active project definitely time to take a look at it some of the features in there we mentioned that geo replicated messaging that's important because maybe you start off all your messaging is at one location whether that's one availability zone or whatever but you may have other devices other things happening closer to where your other people are or where your other customers are and you could have a cluster geo replicated there because maybe it's receiving those messages there so you want to be close to your cluster We'll have them just geo replicate between them. We mentioned those functions horizontally scales out, multi tenant support, that tiered storage, full REST and uh, command line interface so you can access and do any kind of DevOps you need to do. And there's a number of front end web managers, including one from uh, Stream Native and some ones in the open source, depending on what you want to do different ways to subscribe to messages and that really decides if you're doing messaging or stream processing that's up to you and support for all those different protocols and that's very extensible so if you see a protocol missing no reason why not to commit that to the open source on your own or join a group that's already starting on it standard to get messages you do a publish subscribe 
So publishers are sending messages. Topics are exactly what you think. Ordered channel. The producers used to transmit messages over to whoever subscribed. Messages are what you think. It's that data and a topic. And as a payload, what's nice is you're not stuck with one format. It doesn't have to be JSON, doesn't have to be text, doesn't have to be binary, doesn't have to be Avro. You can put whatever you want in there. And we've got some really good support for things like JSON, Avro, and Protobuf. So you'd use those along with schemas and with queries. Makes it pretty powerful. Brokers are just there for compute. They handle connections, route messages between them. They don't do anything with storage. Subscriptions are these configuration rules to tell you how these messages are going to get places. Consumers, as you expect, receive these messages and do with them what they need to. Lots of different parts of Pulsar out there. Functions we mentioned that stream processing. All those cool connectors, you don't have to write code. And protocol handlers, so we could just connect and act as any of the messaging systems that you may be using already. So as you move clients over from a different messaging system, you don't have to rewrite them, don't have to drop in new libraries. You can continue using those existing protocols until such time as you want to replace them, or maybe in just greenfield apps, you'll use uh, the native Pulsar protocols. Topics, I mentioned this before, but I wanted to really break it down what I meant by tenants. So you could have one instance of Pulsar and uh, one specific cluster. It could be geo-replicated somewhere else. But you've got tenants that you've set up, maybe one for each different group within your company, maybe marketing. They can have their own set of namespaces, their own topics. This way, you don't have to come up with long, complex names. This also allows for a very large amount of topics without uh, any confusion there. Now I said subscription modes are really what helps you decide if you're streaming or you're messaging. And here's a couple of, uh, of them here. Exclusive or failover. These go right to one consumer with failover if that consumer is not available. Fails over to the other one as it kind of applies in the name. This is how stream processing work. This is your guaranteed order. This is where you would do your exactly once and at least once kind of semantics. Shared, no order. Just I want to consume and process these messages as fast as possible. This is often a work queue or a way to distribute uh, execution of data or just get it processed. I have a lot of data. Get it to whoever can get it, whenever they can get it. Do it fast. This is obviously faster because you don't have to worry about ordering. There isn't, uh, you know, specific consumers it's going to. Key shared is kind of a uh, in between. You've got a bunch of people consuming them, and you can order them based on a key. This really gives you kind of the best of both worlds while still getting that performance. It's a nice, uh, you know, compromise there. Uh, MQT on Pulsar. Is a really nice way to be able to use your existing Pulsar cluster as if it was an MQTT broker. Consumers and publishers use their native MQTT libraries and just point to Pulsar as their uh, MQTT broker. Same port, same everything they expect, and just works. And once the messages are in Pulsar, you don't have to use that same protocol to get it out. I could push it in with MQTT pull it out with Kafka and uh, the people using it are none the wiser. Same thing with Kafka as you see the design is the same. It doesn't matter if the protocol handler is Pulsar, it's Kafka, it's MQTT, it's AMQP, it's Rocket MQ. Whatever it is, easy, it's extensible and you can turn it up, them on and off as need be. We mentioned the uh, turning data into your system easily. IO connectors, which are basically advanced Pulsar functions, just lets you get data from external systems, maybe get it in and out. Depends on what your use case is. Lots of different options there. Now there's uh, a couple of very large companies out there that are doing some useful things with Pulsar. And there's full description of this at uh, some of the recent Pulsar summits. And there's one coming up in Asia very soon. 
Tencent's doing a number of really high-end complex applications with security analytics, payment reconciliation, and these are across a massive, massive series of data. These are, you know, very large applications that Pulsar is able to support at speed and at scale with full durability and without making mistakes and work well the combination of Pulsar and Flink together. Same with Bigo, using it for ETL recommendation and using the combination of uh, Flink SQL and Pulsar together as a real-time data warehouse. That's pretty awesome use case. Stream Native Cloud is a way you can easily run uh, Pulsar and Flink cloud natively on Kubernetes without having to worry about having to set this stuff up. Got an award for it. Pretty awesome uh, system there. I want to show you a couple of different architectures where people are using Pulsar. Got a number of people out there in e-commerce using uh, Pulsar at scale. What's nice here, instead of having to use a combination of some GMS broker over here, uh, maybe Kafka over there, something else over here, and there's you know a mismatch when you're moving data around, there's maybe duplication, use one messaging system. So you can unify all your application and data services in one architecture. You don't need to worry about duplications or delay. Everything is as fast as it needs to be. You have unified storage and everyone can access it, whatever their consumer or producer it is, whether it's a Flink job or just a regular application in Java, Go, uh, Python, whatever it happens to be. Throw in Spark jobs very easily. You've got that native tiered storage. You could just get to it as pretty easily from either Flink or Pulsar. And you've got a single place to exchange data. Teams get to use the same tool set. Makes it very easy to scale out applications and add new services, regardless of whether they're application or on the data tier. Now for me, in my flip or flipping apps, I often have a number of IoT devices at the edge. Again, this could also be servers. Could be, you know, I just have app servers or SQL databases out there. Maybe some of them accessing through JDBC, some through logs, some through TCP IP. Lots of different protocols there. What's nice is I can use something like a gateway with something like Apache NiFi or, you know, your own gateways or uh, code you have there. Or I can have these devices send the data over various protocols because sometimes I don't want to rewrite them. Maybe they're already doing MQTT, so I could just use uh, MLP for that. Same if they have Kafka, I can send the data over Pulsar native protocol if I want. Or I can send the data over WebSockets, which makes it uh, easy. Lots of libraries out there to do that and support in most languages. This also gives you the option if you're maybe uh, pushing that data in from a mobile app, web app, you know, something that, that maybe doesn't have some advanced libraries out there or you're not going to install a Pulsar library on. And once it's into your uh, cluster, whether that's in the stream native cloud or wherever it may be running, you have that one place that's getting all that data and it can offload that data and once it gets to a certain size or a certain age, but it's still available to be consumed, to be queried. So if I start up a new application and I want to go back to the first record I ever pushed into the system, I could start from there, read the whole thing back. Some will be in tiered storage, some will be in uh, primary storage. It'll be transparent to them other than uh, potential difference in uh, speed, you know, if it's in a local bookkeeper SSD, it's going to be faster than coming out of uh, an Azure storage. And now when that data comes out, I can have it automatically sync to different uh, cloud object stores or different uh, databases, things like uh, ClickHouse or maybe Azure Data Lake Storage. And I can have web sockets coming out to my microservices who just get these events as they happen, display it on a dashboard, display it on a web page, use it for uh, notebooks, whatever makes sense for your applications there. Now we've talked for a decent amount of time on this. I want to show you a little bit what we can actually do. 
So let me get uh, into some code here. Now I have a server here running and it's got uh, Apache Pulsar running here and I could just uh, consume different types of data here just to show you doing that from the command line and say I'm in something like Apache NiFi and I want to send some data to Pulsar pretty easy to do I've processed my data have it ready and my connector is about as simple as you can be all I need to do is put in a uh, a controller connection here and that points to my cluster whether it's in the cloud or here locally in my office and then this is the format for uh, for topic naming persistent tells me it's a persistent one again you could do non persistent not common but sometimes for performance that makes sense and then I've got my tenant my namespace and my topic this gives you as you can see lots of naming based on what permissions you might have and you have lots of options do you want to batch these together do you want to make synchronous how do you want to route them you know lots of options there pretty easy to do we just process that 3000 and if we look in our command line consumer we've gotten those messages already as they're sent pretty easy to do now if I was running that within stream native cloud I could see all my messages in uh, a UI so I can uh, preview the data look at all the metadata and you know I could set up subscriptions I could check the storage uh, set up security policies all from a graphical interface pretty easy I can also see if there's a schema for this and like for this one I have a JSON schema telling me the field names uh, field types are they nullable what's the default value that sort of thing pretty easily and if I wanted to query it I could just uh, go through my uh, my cluster here find uh, my table make sure it's the right one and then just do a SQL query just as if it was a regular table but it's not a table this is a topic that exists in that tenant and namespace and is continuously changing so when I run a SQL query it is continuous it's always running just gives you uh, different things you could do there now as part of my data streaming as data is streaming I have a sync within Pulsar that is automatically streaming data into this ClickHouse data warehouse which is uh, pretty easy to do and I don't have to do uh, anything other than having that schema and having that data streaming in you know real time as it happens unless I time out here let's get back in yeah when you're running clusters I rather a time out than have uh, security issues but these are the ones coming in recently I'm running on this device here we'll get out of our consumer I have a uh, on this same device I have this is an Nvidia Jetson Xavier which is a pretty powerful machine this is running some uh, real-time deep learning analytics and grabbing some sensor and IoT values and when it's done with that sends it over MQTT and I'm also sending it over uh, native Pulsar so I'm putting data into two different topics two different ways just as a way of getting data now I can push it also to something like uh, PostgreSQL or I can have someone like uh, NiFi query the data and uh, send it for me it really depends on what you want to do here and we can see the data coming in pretty straightforward but it gives us uh, you know all the fields we want all the metadata this one had grabbed two messages at a time depending on the speed here and this is just some uh, stock data and you can see the different times that this came in one minute apart really it, it can be batched as big as you want depending on your consumer depending on how you put it in there depending on how you want the data depending how fast you can process it 
lots of options there whether your data is coming from REST, from logs, from databases, doesn't really matter. Lots of options there. So you can see how easy it was to put in. If I show you uh, how I did that, it is uh, very straightforward. If we go to uh, that application, I'll show you here. You know, here to, to send it into NVIDIA, uh, this one's running. I have a Java one that's running and producing a schema. That schema maps that JSON data to a schema, sends it on its way. Very easy to do. And then from, uh, from my cluster that I'm into, if I look at uh, the configuration for that, I can see the... Uh, I'll do it for the ClickHouse IoT. And this one is all the uh, setup I had to do is just set up this configuration file and launch a sync. The sync runs, deploys what it needs to do, and uh, we're set to go there. Very easy. If you're interested in Pulsar, we've got a Slack channel that's pretty busy. We've got a monthly newsletter. We've got meetups. I run one in New York. We're going to be doing hybrid for as long as we can. So we'll have some in person. But we'll make sure that we have it streamed out to either YouTube or Twitch or somewhere or LinkedIn. Somewhere else where you could watch it if you're not in uh, my area. And we've got other meetups around the country to show you different things you could do with Pulsar. I've got a number of different links here. And I'll make sure you get these slides. So it'll be very simple for you to uh, to see that. We've got, uh, let me get over here, make this larger for you. We've got a number of resources here. Some ways, some uh, example code. We've got two full ebooks available on Pulsar. Great way to learn it. We also have uh, uh, academy uh, that streamnative.io that we're doing uh, free training and there's some labs there and you can sign up for more advanced training with an instructor so you can really get ready to do some real-time streaming and messaging unified development I'm speaking at a number of conferences uh, this year though we're running out of time here so not too many more conferences we're also hiring we hire remote so you don't have to live in you know certain part of the world uh, I'm in New Jersey we've got people in Utah, in China, all over the world. So uh, if you're looking for a job, we've got a bunch of them out there, especially people with cloud experience or Flink or Spark, uh, lots of different roles out there. Please uh, keep the conversation going. Uh, I'm available on Twitter constantly. <laughs> and you'll also see me posting a lot on LinkedIn. Uh, this is my GitHub. I want to go there and show you uh, some example code. I have a ton of stuff out here, so if you're uh, interested in uh, seeing how we do things, you know, they're all here. Fork them, start getting uh, coding. Everything you need is here, like how I built the table that I showed you before. You know, here's another table. You know, here is the connectivity you need to do a sync to, uh, from Pulsar to ClickHouse. Pretty straightforward. I put that topic in there that's got the uh, tenant namespace and topic name. The type of sync it is, give it a name, say where this should run. And I just put the configuration to my uh, data store there and it's ready to go. You know, we're running to, uh, to that database pretty easy. And I've got a number of different uh, tools here for you to be able to check out how to explore the different topics, how to start and stop a sync. Again, this can all be done with a DevOps tool or it can be done in uh, from the UI if you want, but this makes it pretty easy to deploy a new sync. You just have to make sure you've downloaded that NAR from the uh, Stream Native Hub or from its uh, open source uh, directory. Link to where that is. Put in your input topic, 
give it that name and point to that config file and say how many of those you want to run at once. I mean generally one is pretty good. And we've got a couple here and then once you're done we could take a look at the uh, at the namespace there and uh, see who's running so you can have as many syncs as you want. Obviously depending on what your infrastructure is, how much space you have, you know, all those sort of things. So you could have a, a ton of them out there. And you could do other things from the command line as well, as well as uh, if you wanted to test out consuming messages, that's as easy it as it is. Good way to uh, test them when you're, when you're first doing it. Also a great way to, uh, you know, get that data if you want to do a, you know, write no application and just send that to a file, maybe just for doing your uh, integration testing later. Pretty straightforward. And you know, we've got other ones out here for say edge applications. And I've got all the codes you need here, how to build topics, how to list topics, how to uh, delete a topic, how to create a table in Flink on top of that topic, you know, how to run all these different things, how to do Pulsar SQL, that's that Presto, you know, lots of different things you could do here show you all the source code for writing your own applications, whether it's in Python, it's in Java, whatever language makes sense to you. Uh, like here, I've got the code for Java. Uh, this is the bean that gets mapped to a schema. Similar syntax in Python and Go, but uh, pretty easy in Java. I just have all the fields that I, I'm going to want and then I could just have my application and this is as easy as uh, as it is. Let me make this a little bigger. And we include a couple libraries. Again, there's all the uh, the Maven scripts to uh, connect to the current version and you know you pass in whatever values you need if you need to connect to say the cloud server or wherever your server is running checks the credentials here I'm doing OAuth logs in and then I build up that uh, URL here I like to create a unique ID for every uh, message I'm sending in not required but I think it's a good idea and then I'm going to take that uh, message that came in uh, that was JSON and I take that JSON and I parse that out into an IoT message this automatically applies that schema as you see here so when I produce a message to whatever topic I passed in and I give it a producer name again it could be whatever I want set a timeout and then I start sending messages I set the key again I use that UUID if you have a natural key use that if you don't want a key you don't have to but it's helpful for that key shared one or just in general to find what your messages are if there's a key for your data put it in the key field, put your value in there. This one, it's JSON. If you want to add additional properties, these go along with the message. They're not in the body of the message, but you saw that when we were looking at uh, Stream Native Cloud, you could see those properties. If you need to pass in other information or you know there's uh, metadata you want to add, you could do it there. And then we send, close it up and that's it. Parsing JSON in uh, Java is pretty easy. Just have this object mapper that maps it from that JSON to that class. And then I use the schema based on that. So that's as much work as I need to do. I don't have to uh, manually create a schema. I don't have to build it out there. If you're not using JSON, if you use an Avro or Protobuf, slightly different class, but the same idea. Pretty easy to get your data in and out of Pulsar without a lot of heavy lifting there. I hope you enjoyed my talk. We have time for questions. So hopefully uh, you have questions. If, if you want, I'll, I'll take a look right now and see if there's any in the list there. And then we should have five or 10 minutes, depending on how we're going in the schedule, to answer questions. If you have no uh, questions, I can go through some more examples or some other work. Uh, thank you for coming to this session. I hope you're enjoying the Automation Summit. I'm uh, Timothy Spann. 
If you liked uh, my talk, uh, please let me know. If you didn't like my talk, don't tell anybody. So uh, thanks for coming, and I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your session.